Clearly, I should not film at night. I have a natural light. Doesn't matter how much makeup I wear, I look like I'm dead. Anyway, um, I was asked to talk about um, the difference between avoidant attachment style and avoidant personality disorder. Um, these are two completely separate things. They have nothing to do with each other. Um, I've heard people say, oh, you can't have avoidant personality disorder and not have avoidant attachment style. I don't completely believe that. The same way I don't completely believe you have to be introverted to be um, to have avoidant personality disorder. The reason is because if it truly was you must have this in your life, um, then it would be part of the diagnosis. Gnostic criterion, it's not. Um, but I think that it's very, very common. Um, so let me sort of run down what happens when you have an avoidant attachment style. Um, your parent is um, neglectful emotionally. Um, and you know, it's it's they just they don't acknowledge your needs as an individual at all, and um, for that reason, if you when you do have that, you I'm talking to myself as you because it's hard to explain. I'm trying to make a distinction here, and it's probably going to sound all alike, but it's not. I mean, the effect is different, and of course, if you have a weight personality disorder, you have to have a personality disorder um, and that is separate from avoidant traits and you know in addition to avoidant traits um, to have an attachment style which is an avoidant attachment style can be anybody um, and it again with it, an avoidant attachment style it's very specific neglect where they don't pay any attention to your individual needs um, at all, and so, uh, you know, as a child, as a very young child, um, you know, like for instance, this is hard to explain. You know, when when my son was a baby and he needed something and he would cry, and you know, I was a single parent, so you know, life, and I couldn't always drop everything to go and get him, but I would always say. I would always talk to him when I heard him. I was like, it's okay, I'll be right there. And he got used to that and could understand that that meant I was going to, I was acknowledging him and I was going to come and take care of him. That doesn't happen if you have uh, this type of abuse. The parents do not acknowledge at all that, you know, there's any individual that needs that you have, um, period. They, they don't come when you need them. In a nutshell, and so um, you grow up and think that your needs and emotions and anything about yourself are invalid, um, and that they're pointless and worthless. This is separate from avoidant personality disorder, feeling like you are a worthless human being. You don't feel like you're a worthless human being if you have avoidant att um, attachment. You feel like your emotions are invalid completely, and so there's no point in having any acknowledgement of them whatsoever. Um, how that should, when you when you become an adult, how that manifests, you know, it's avoidant. Um, you avoid having emotional attachments with other people. Now, that is separate from avoidant personality disorder because, um, oh, see, here we go. This is where it gets difficult um, to try to make this distinction because I can I can totally see it in my head, but to put it into words is really hard. Um, if you have avoidant personality disorder, you are actually um, very extremely aware of your own emotions and you honor them. Um, you honor them and protect them and that is why you avoid. 
um, when you have avoidant attachment, um, you avoid being in relationships and having um, emotional interactions with people because you basically try to, you know, pretend they don't even exist. Um, a lot of times you can't recognize them at all in yourself. Um, and you're very, just extremely dismissive of any emotional attachment you have with another person. And um, it's sort of like, I don't know, it's sort of like you think you're above them all. I don't know it's it, that see that's the thing is and this is why I don't know I'll get I'll get crap for it but I don't think that I have avoidant attachment per se now I'm saying this as a person who um, goes through depressive periods where I literally will say um, I think that I'm so worthless and awful that um, my son must have some form of Stockholm syndrome to have anything to do with me um, that is the depression that is not consistent perfectly, um, like a, across the board, it's not hundred percent. Um, again, this is, this is, it's really hard to make this distinction because on paper they look identical and, um, usually you can say, well, you know, the reason why depression is different from avoidant personality disorder is where it comes from. Um, avoidant personality disorder and avoidant attachment are um, both uh, caused by abuse. But again, avoidant attachment is specifically emotional neglect. Um, and that's what causes it. So um, avoidant personality disorder can be caused by all kinds of different abuses, including bullying from friends, physical and sexual abuse, um, you know, where it, 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 there's all kinds of different things, whereas um, avoidant attachment comes from that one specific thing. And again, I think it's really hard sometimes for people to break it apart, um, but I think it's helpful if you can and say, okay, this is avoidant personality disorder and this is why I behave in this way and this is avoidant attachment um, so uh, I think that it's possible that again this is splitting hairs but I think it's possible that somebody who really truly has avoidant personality disorder is misdiagnosed as schizoid because they have avoidant attachment and the combination um, could possibly make for a misdiagnosis in that case. But see, the thing is, is that like, the, the real difference is people with avoidant attachment do not acknowledge their emotions when it comes to other people at all. Um, avoidant personality disorders, um, people, I mean, I've talked to them and I have seen how you know, passionately they're um, interested in other people and I have seen how devastated they are when it does not work out for them. Um, when, you know, they either can't deal with it or um, the other person abandons them or something like that. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's brutal. It's absolutely brutal um, for these people. So that's why I think I think there's a definite separation. Um, of course, I am not a therapist and I have not gone through um, all the um, schooling that they've gone through. But then again, schooling doesn't mean much in my opinion because you've heard what I had to say about Cantor. Um, and I have to talk only from the experiences that I've had which is my own self and other people I've talked to. Um, and of course, you know, I'm busting on Cantor for having so few clients, although he claims to be an expert. Uh, I haven't, I mean, I've probably talked to way more avoidant people than probably even most therapists, but I, you know, I'm, I haven't talked to everybody and I don't talk to many people with avoidant 
attachment. Um, because, and, and the reason I think that that is possibility is because of course, if you have got a point personality disorder, you have to be sure that the other person likes you before you interact with them. You have to be able to, you know, you, you need to know that before you take the next step. And so therefore, you know, the person has to be able to demonstrate that they are liking you. Um, so I think it's unlikely that a, a person with avoidant personality disorder could be in relationship unless they really, really hated themselves or it was truly the only option that they had with somebody with avoidant attachment. I just, I don't see that happening. And I'm sure that I'm going to have somebody say, oh yeah, that's exactly what's going on with me. Um, I mean, everything's possible in the world, but I think that's unlikely for that to happen. Um, so yeah, they are separate things. I'm not sure if I made the distinction in any way, shape or form clear um, as I know it. Um, give it a shot while I'm talking about it. Um, it's, it's not really my thing. I talked about it sort of before um, a little bit in videos here and there. It's, it's just not my expertise in any way, shape or form. Um, but that, that's, that's, that's the differences. And that's, that's what I was asked to say. Could I, could I define the differences and that those are what they are. Um, so again, it can of course be comorbid, you know, the same abuse that would have caused an avoidant attachment if you have the genetic predisposition and it's long term enough, um, then you could also get an avoidant personality disorder. Um, that's the other thing is that avoidant attachment is really, really young, really young. We're talking babies and toddlers. That's when it, it happens. So it's not, so if you have like a decent parent who suddenly, who knows, you know, uh, their partner dies or something. They come so depressed that they um, completely shut down once the child start talking. Um, that would be a horrible experience for the child to go through, but that would not make them have uh, an avoidant attachment because it has to be, like I said, babies. Um, they learn from their very first experience in the world that nobody's going to be there for them. And that you know, therefore their needs and wants are useless and nobody's going to give them any help of any sort whatsoever. So there's no bother, you know, no, why even try? Why get your hopes up? Why bother anybody with it? Um, I hope that sort of answers the question. Um, research it more. And, you know, if you think I'm dead wrong, go ahead and tell me. Um, because I get, I don't, I don't think that, I don't think I have great attachment. Um, I don't think I have avoidant because I'm just terribly insecure. I have no confidence whatsoever that anybody's going to want anything to do with me. Um, but I am allowed, I, I am like allowed, I am able to, uh, emote with other people. So I, I don't think I have avoidant attachment. Could be wrong, but that's my understanding of how it works.